Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznos here, and welcome to my Ultimate Abyssal Slayer Creature Guide for the newly released Abyssal Creatures. This guide is going to cover all the creatures, starting from the lowest level, the Savages, and going to the Beasts and the Lords, showing you all the requirements, drops, recommended gear setups, strategies. I've been doing these creatures pretty much since I could find a world during release, and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on them now, which is why I waited a bit to put this out. First, we'll go to the requirements and the location. So the Abyssal Creature are located in the Sentizen Asylum, which is located in the city of Sentizen. And to kill these creatures, you need three different Slayer levels. So for the Abyssal Savages, you need level 95 Slayer. For the Abyssal Beasts, you need level 105 Slayer. And for the Abyssal Lords, you need level 115 Slayer. Now I would recommend having level, you know, 90-ish combat stats, which you probably do if you have those Slayer levels, as well as Soul Split and Turmoils, which again, you probably will have these and decent gear if you're at 95, 105, or 115 Slayer. So now before I get into the gear setups and how to kill these, let's go over some very useful items when killing any of these Slayer creatures. So an old act coil is very important to killing these, and so is Soul Split, with preferably an Amulet of Souls or an Essence of Finality, just so you heal more. An Abyssal Mask is also extremely, extremely useful, and it acts as a Slayer Helmet when on assignment. It grants you additional Slayer experience. It will also grant you double drops for every 10th kill, for for up to 900 kills and then it will become a helm of warping which does not provide the bonus xp the double drops or the extra damage however you can reset this with a spirit of the battle if you happen to have one from treasure hunter which is very very useful if you want to continue to take advantage of all its buffs Auras such as the Vampirism and Penance Aura are super useful here too, depending on the route you decide to go with your setup. Same with Enhanced Excalibur for healing and the Ancient Elven Ritual Shard for Prayer Restoration. The Death Note Relic can also be used here to note the Infernal Ashes dropped by the Abyssal Creatures. If you have 108 Archaeology, you can use that. You can also use Infernal Urns to turn those Infernal Ashes into Prayer XP as well. Other notable and useful items here include the Spring Cleaner, the Animate Dead Spell, which is not required of course, Weapon poisons, Cinderbane gloves, since these are poisonable. Any incense sticks like Quorum or Lantidime to increase your overload timer and to increase your weapon poison damage. The Demon Slayer perk and Demon Slayer sigil for more damage. The Greater Chain ability is also super useful, as well as other AOE abilities. It's also no secret that these creatures have so many people packed at them right now since they just came out, but the mods did say they're looking to deploy a hotfix to add instances to the asylum, so I'll update the pinned comment when those instances are currently out, but as of now, it still stands as a free-for-all to find a world. Of course, you can try to get these to put in your player-owned Slayer Dungeon too, if you'd like, although it's much faster to kill them here, unless you're doing the higher-level ones that spawn less frequently, like the Lords. So now as for the location, these are located in the city of Sentizen. I'll show me running there now and on the map how to get there. It's very simple, and these are on different levels in the Abyssal Asylum which is what was just released with all these creatures so pretty simple to get there and you can pause the video if you want to see. So now I'm going to go into the gear and inventory setups. Now these setups basically work for all the creatures so whether you're going to go to the lower level ones or the higher level ones these should work for all of them. I'm going to show you a low level setup or a budget setup that I've tested at all these places and tell you how it works if you need to make any adjustments and then also a high level setup. So of course we're going to start with the savages first. So here are the two setups. So for the high level setup, we basically have our Abyssal Mask, and then we have three pieces of Crit Bloom. You do not need this, of course. You can definitely maintain health without it, which I'll go into, but this just gives you even more security. If you feel like your HP and prayer is staying up, you can even go for, you know, Power Armor if you want uh, to use that there, although, of course, that is pretty expensive. We have the Zuck Mage Cape, but, you know, use your best cape. We have the Scripture of Wen for AoE damage, but feel free to use what Whatever pocket slot item you have available. We also have a seismic wand and orb. You can use a staff. I'd say probably tier 80 to tier 90 uh, mage weapon at least, but you can use a staff or dual wield. Either or works. We have cinderbane gloves, which are very, very good, of course, as these creatures are poisonable. I have luck of the dwarves. If you don't care about the luck of the dwarves buff, you can also use something like a chandler's ring or, you know, just the best ring you have. As for amulet, we have an essence of finality. You can also use an amulet 
Amulet of Souls, and I'll talk about later whether you can get away with using something lesser that doesn't buff your soul split, like Amulet of Souls or Essence of Finality. And then, of course, we have the Rune Pouch, which I guess you don't technically need a Rune Pouch. You can bring the runes in your inventory, but it's just nice to save some space. And as for the inventory, you'll want to bring your best overloads. I brought some Super Prayer Renewals. Depending on if your prayer starts to run out or not, you can bring Penance Powder to maintain your prayer even more, but I didn't find that I needed it. An Ancient Elven Ritual Shard and Enhanced Excalibur, of course, like I said, is very nice for keeping up your health and prayer. A Spring Cleaner, an Old Act Coil with Cannonballs, a Weapon Poison Potion, and also an Aggression Potion. And then for your aura, you're going to want to use the Penance Aura. This will keep your prayer super high, and with Soul Split, you should be able to maintain all the health that you need. However, if you aren't maintaining your health as well as you should be, whether you're using lesser gear or something like that, you can go and use the Vampirism Aura instead, but then you'll just need to compensate for the prayer by probably bringing more prayer potions, of course a prayer renewals, and the Penance Powder would be very, very good if you do not have the Penance Aura. All right, so now we'll look at an overview of a more budget setup. Now, this setup basically is Ganodermic using Animate Dead. Now I had three pieces of Ganodermic here, which is very, very cheap. Also, of course, the Mass the Abyss, a Skill Cape, um, then a Luck of the Dwarves, of course. You don't need to use Luck of the Dwarves. You can use whatever ring you have. I use the Illuminated Book of Balance, the Guthix book. Um, and then I had, of course, the Penance Aura, a Rune Pouch. Again, you don't need a Rune Pouch. It just saves inventory space. Then I had Cinderbane Gloves. And then for a weapon, I tried this with a tier 80 weapon and a tier 88 uh, superior Zoreal Staff, and both ended up working well. So for weapon, I would recommend between tier 80 and tier 90, but like I said before, I'll assume you probably have somewhere in here since you have this Slayer level. And then for this setup, I have the Blood Amulet of Fury. Since Amulet of Souls is pretty expensive now, of course, if you do have that, it's going to be way better, but I'll take note and let you know during each of these different creatures if I needed to switch to an Amulet of Souls or if I need to make any adjustments to these setups. So first, we're going to start with the lowest level creatures, the Abyssal Savages, which require 95 Slayer. So let's go to them now. All right, so I went with the high level setup first, drank my Aggression Potion, had on the Penance Aura, uh, used Animate Dead, and it went super smooth. I hardly ever dropped uh, any health at all. I probably could have easily done this without Animate Dead too, uh, just because it was kind of, the, the whole setup was kind of overkill, especially for these lower level ones, the high level setup. So you should have absolutely no problem with this. I was getting very fast kills. My um, ability bar will be on screen as well, so you can see that for each of these methods. The important thing, of course, is to have a lot of AoE abilities. Like Greater Chain, I did not actually have, but it is very, very strong here, uh, as well as like Dragon's Breath, Corruption Blast. All these AoE abilities are super, super good. And with the higher level setup, I was managing around 1,400 kills or so per hour. Like I said, you just put down your old that coil, soul split, I uh, get all your buffs, aggression potion, and you should be pretty good to go for some very fast kills. You can pause the video if you'd like to look at the ability bar and basically what I'm using. Now for the budget method, of course, I use the gear that I showed previously. And since I was using a staff, the ability bar changed a tiny little bit, which is on the screen as well. And this one, basically the same. I didn't really have any need to eat. I definitely, of course, was getting less kills kills per hour because the gear was more budget and there were times that I definitely get lower in health than when using the high level setup but all in all it went pretty smoothly with this budget setup. If you do feel like you're struggling on health for any of these creatures with any of these setups you can switch to the vampirism aura instead of the penance aura but make sure that you then start using penance powder so you can maintain your prayer easily and you'll probably have to bring some prayer potions too but all in all you have a very wide range of what you can do and now we're going to move on to the next creatures which are the abyssal beasts now the abyssal beasts require 105 slayer and they basically have a special attack that can drain the health of you if you don't avoid it and if you're killing these on a slayer test they're gonna count for two kills per kill instead of one so keep that in mind now when it comes to these the special attack you don't really need to worry about when i did these using the high level setup i'll show you the ability bar it's basically the same as i use for the lower level creatures it worked really really well so with the high level setup 
setup, I was able to kill these pretty consistently. I wasn't using Animate Dead at first just to see how it went, and I was getting hit a little bit more, and I would go down to like half health or so, but then I'd pretty much soul split it up. But using Animate Dead was much, much better, and I was able to do these pretty consistently. You don't really need to do anything special. It's basically the same as the Abyssal Savages. They just hit a little bit harder and have more health. So when you go into the budget setup, you might have a little more trouble just because these things hit a bit harder. So using Animate Dead, um, if you find that you're not healing enough using the Pen and Sword, like I said, um, I would switch to Vampir Zamora and then switch to the Penance Powder to be able to maintain your prayer. This should make you be able to maintain health, but if you still can't, you might want to switch to an Amulet of Souls, although you should be able to do it with this gear as I was as well. So as for the Abyssal Lords, these are the highest level Abyssal Slayer creatures. They require level 115 Slayer to be fought and are located at the bottom of the Abyssal Asylum. So basically these Lords use a magic attack as their standard auto attack. And then they can also teleport around the same way all Abyssal Demons can. And then they can also summon Abyssal Tentacles that will hit you hard with magic. Now the thing is these only have 750 health, but they'll still around even if you kill the Lord. So this is where the old deck coil comes in handy. If you go to a quadrant with these Abyssal Lords, you can put down your old deck coil and the old deck coil should take out the tentacle. So you really won't take too much damage from these. It's sort of like when you go to Corp and you have your old deck coil and it takes out the dark core. So that is the general strategy when it comes to these. So these Lords are by far the most packed with people competing very aggressively for spots to kill these. Mostly because these drop the tier 92 whip and of course are the most sought after creatures to kill. So this should be a lot better once instances come out, but for now it's going to be really hard for you to find a world. So you basically want to use the same strategy you did for the other creatures, pot up. You want to set down your old deck coil in one of the quadrants. This is so you kind of maintain one area with the Abyssal Lords. You should not have that difficult of a time at all killing these. These aren't like some crazy hard boss or anything. And I was able to pretty easily with the same revolution bar that I showed you earlier, kill these with the higher level setup without much trouble at all because you're only going to be focusing one, maybe two of these at once if you get more of a, you know, big area. When you are able to create instances, this might change if you're trying to kill a ton of these at once. But as it stands, you'd be lucky to find a world to even focus on one of these. And for the budget setup, I was able to easily do this as well. Of course, I did actually need to use Animate Dead with the lower level setup, but it was pretty easy. And all in all, um, the Abyssal Lords aren't that hard at all. None of these creatures are super hard at all. Um, when it comes to instances and you're able to kill, you know, five, six Abyssal Lords at once possibly, then uh, you might need to change your strategy a little bit. But as it stands, killing a few of these at once with this setup is really, really easy. Um, and you can try to get yourself a nice tier 92 whip. Now real quick I'm going to go over the loot for these. So the Abyssal Savages basically drop just normal drops sort of like Abyssal Demons although you can get the Abyssal Flesh which is used to make the new Abyssal Armor Spikes but other than that the Abyssal Savages don't have any big crazy rare drops. When we move on to the Abyssal Beast this is where it heats up a little bit. The Abyssal Beast can drop the Abyssal Flesh as well but they can also drop the new Jaws of the Abyss Helm which is a new melee helmet which which also sells for a decent amount so the abyssal beast this is why there's so many people there and then of course we have the abyssal lords finally which drop the abyssal flesh as well they can also drop a gate key which is used to create a shortcut to get from the abyssal lords to the savages quickly so this just makes it so when you go in to kill abyssal lords you don't have to run all the way around again uh, it makes it much much faster to get there and then we have the new tier 92 whip which is also dropped from the abyssal lord so this is the main item that everyone's there for this is the newest tier 92 so that's why the abyssal lords and the abyssal beasts are much more packed than the abyssal savages although the abyssal savages still drop some decent normal loot the flesh and they're pretty good slayer xp as well so all around i hope this guide helped you guys out of course once instances are released um, you may have to use a few different strategies for the abyssal lords but as of now this is really really good and the beasts and the savages uh, will hold up to you know basically kill the entire room or most of the room if you want with these setups and yeah if this video helped you out make sure to leave a like make sure to subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you all in the next video